Welcome to another scripting video for Pixel Game Maker. Today's video is going to be very important to understand, especially if you're getting into scripting and plugins. It's going to be how to allow a single object to run multiple logic at the same time. So if you come from RPG Maker, that would be the equivalent of a parallel uh, common event. Or in coding language, it's known usually as async processing. So we're going to be able to do everything inside of one object. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so here's the scene starting. You can see that in the intro video, you saw that the flashlight was moving around based off the direction. All right, so we're gonna do that logic all within the same object, and it's gonna be super easy with scripting, okay? And so what I mean by that is usually when you're doing like a flashlight like this, you have four different FOVs, and let me show you in the FOV here. See, so we have an FOV down, lie, uh, left, right, up. Each one has a different rotate, basically for the angle. And then we have a switch that is associated with each one too. So this one, it has a, a down switch, left, right, and up switch. All right, and that's usually all good. You'll need at least the default one. So what I did is I just said that down will start on and then everyone else starts off. So that there's a little check there. So that brings us to how can we do this all within the same object? Because it's very hard to do if you were just doing it in this object with visual scripting. For instance, you would need a weight and then you would need a way to, you could do the whole, if direction changes, then go to another action. But then when you go to actions, you lose the animation frame you were on and things can get messy very quickly. And so the only real logical way to do it with visual scripting is to actually go and create a child object, which is going to handle your light direction. And then inside here, you would have the visual scripting based off the player's direction, and it would turn uh, down on, and this would be like a processing, right? And then you'd have turn up, left, right. And then in here, you would have to first off turn on the right switch. So you'd have to turn on, say they were facing um, uh, down here, you would turn this one on, and then you would also have to copy this four times and turn all the other ones off just to make sure. And you would have all the links processing accordingly. But it would have to be run through, oh, and then you'd have to go to player object. You'd have to go to, you have to actually add connect object. And then you'd have to connect that object just like this, lot for light direction. Okay, so there, there's a lot involved with, with this method. So now we're gonna go into the scripting method here. So I'm gonna delete all these and show you just how easy it is. All right, so the first thing that we need to understand is we need to understand asynchronous processing or parallel processing and how we can achieve that. So if we're thinking of an area that the script can be run over and over again and not be affected by anything else in the game because we could run a script as you saw in the first video we could run a script inside every link that is also checking uh, for the direction change and changing it accordingly. And it never has a true, so it never breaks the link. It's just purely for that. But then you have to put that logic in every single link or at least one link per action. So you'd have to put it like right here. And then in the move state, you'd have to put it in one of these. So maybe right here. And that could get messy really quick. So one of the one cool thing is common actions, right? Common actions are running always and they, yeah, they're just like a global link. So now we can actually create a common action and we can name this just uh, async processing for now. And particularly this one will be light direction, but you would probably have more or if not more common actions of this. And then we really don't care about what happens in here and we really don't even need to, we don't need to dead end them like, like we usually do when we're using these because this link is never going to actually ring true. It's just purely going to be running logic. So you can do anything you want in that link for a constant check and it would run the whole entire game inside the same object that is running the rest of the logic. I hope that makes sense because if it does, that could just change a lot of how you uh, organize your game. All right, so now let's go to make the script. We need to go into the common action tab here and we need to click on this, the link. If we are 
if you're accidentally doing it in the runtime action, then it's not necessarily, it's not a true async parallel processing, all right, because you left the state that you were in. So we have to make sure it's in the link so that it's a true async parallel type processor. And so we're going to add a execute script here, but I'm just going to hit okay and just leave it there. Now I wanted to do it all within the script, but I can't find an easy way to, to zoom in the computer. And if I did the monitor, it, it didn't show right. I was going to do it directly from within the script, but we'll just go to the uh, typical ID that we have here. And I'm going to copy this and we're going to uh, delete that and paste in the power template. All right. And then I'll try to uh, bring this in a bit. There we go. Okay, so hopefully we can see good and all that good stuff. So now we're going to start uh, building this script. So the first thing that we want is we want the self. So self equals get self. The next thing that we want is we want the direction. So self direction. Here's another power template function. Uh, this one is a power template function, by the way. So get instance variable. And we want it of the self. And we want to get the display direction. All right. So that is one way that you can do it. If you remember the name, just remember it's case sensitive, um, space sensitive, it, it requires all that stuff. Once you start getting a little more familiar, you'll start, it's actually better to use the number or another method, but my functions don't run that other method. So I won't even get into that. They, but they will run with the ID number and they're just as efficient. So I'm going to say this display direction. That way I just have a mental note real quick that 37 is display direction. All right. And now we can start running this logic. We have the direction. Well, we have the object, we have the direction, and now we can start running some checks. So a simple way to do checks with if statements. So we could say direction self equals zero, and that's going to be our first check. Then the next one is going to be else if self direction equals 90. And then we'll do a check right there as well. And then I'm going to come and grab these and paste these two more times. And this one will be if it's 180. And this one will be if it is 270 right here. All right. So now we have the block of code that we're going to run to, to, to change everything. So if it is going up, we want the up switch to be on, but everything else to be off. So we're going to simply say set instance variable, another power template function. We're going to say of the self, because that's the object that we're wanting to do it on or the instance. And then we're going to grab it. Well, I'll just show you by the name first. So I think it was light FOV and then it was down. And then we're going to set this one to true. All right. So again, we can grab it by the name or we can grab it by the ID, just like we did right here. So I'm going to quickly go and show you how to get the ID of a switch. If you're not familiar with a, with a custom made switch. All right. So we go to plugins here, we grab our show log. It's going to pop up right here. I usually like to keep it halved like this. I'm going to half my editor window as well. Go back to objects, go to switch management, and then I'm going to clear the log right here. So if I click down on left, you can see that this is switch number 2004. All right. So that's the, this is the ID right here. And by the way, the guide does show exactly where to get these as well. So the down is 2003. So if down is 2003, left is 2004. I can guess that right is 2005. Yep. And then up is 2006. All right. So 2003, I start with down, left, right, up. So with that, I can actually, I'll just close this for now, remaximize this and might have to do some adjusting. There we go. And so now we can go back here and we can say we want to set, well, actually, if we're zero, we want it up. So this would have been wrong. Initially, we wanted up, right? So up, we know, is the last one, which was 2006. All right. And then we can set the other ones because we had to set this one to true. But we need to set these ones. So for instance, three, and we need to set these to false. So I'm going to grab this and copy paste this two more times and go four and five. And then I'm going to grab this big chunk of code here. And if we're going to the right, then we want the right one. So we had down, left, right. So we want five and we'll go down here 
and put six to turn off, right? So true is on, false is off. Then we go down here. If we're going down, then we want three. That was the first one. And then real quickly, we'll just turn five off. And then if we go left, then we want four and we'll turn five off. A little out of order and all this stuff, but it works. And that's really it. We can literally control A, copy, go to our common action link, paste it, and this should run. We can play and we're gonna be facing down and it doesn't wanna take it. I probably, well, well, let's debug here. So it says that there's an error in the instance here. No file name instance variable get is null. So let's go and let's see what happened here. So get instance variable. Oh, this is why. See, I said set instance variable, but we're not setting a variable, we're setting a switch. So I just need to change this to set instant switch and then change all of these. There's a way you can F2 and rename them all, but I don't wanna do that in this case because it will rename the function. So I'm just gonna take my time and copy it. Control A and paste over it. And now this should work a lot better. And there we go. So now depending on the direction, it is uh, changing, it is changing uh, which flashlight to show. And the cool thing is, is this is doing this out of the same object and it's running it basically separately or at the same time as all the other logic in this object. It's really cool. Now, let me show you a little bit of an efficiency trick right here. All right. So if we are moving up and we are already set to up, then we don't necessarily want to be setting these switches on and off. So what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap this in another check. And we're going to say, if get instance switch self uh, 2006. And we're actually going to say if not. So we're going to put this little exclam or yeah, exclamation point. We're going to put it in front of this function. And that's going to say if it's not true. All right. Because when you get the switch, it's going to just bring back a value of true or false. That's what get instance switch does. So it's going to say this is true or false. If you put the exclamation in front, it's going to say not true. All right. So if it's not true, then that's when we want to actually run this code. And here's some shortcut uh, tips here. You can select them all and you can press tab or you can press shift tab and move them back. So when you grab stuff, you can do that. All right. So now that we have this, we can uh, do that. Well, first off, let me, let me test this real quick and make sure that it does go down. So we'll just test this. Make sure that I got the right one. Yep, it's got that check in there. And as long as it will go down again, there we go. But see, when it goes down, now what it's doing is it only turns them off, or sorry, it only turns the down one on if it's off. That means that you're already facing down and now you're skipping the whole setting four switches, which could eat up some processing power. All right, so then all we got to do is just copy that with the rest of these. And I can literally just bring this over. Whoops, there we go. But this one is if we're going right. So that one was, let's see, three, four, five. So if not this, and before I put those, before I move everything, I'm just going to bring them down. So left or down was three. And then four. So then I can copy these and actually put them in the, the right area. And put these ones in the right area. And then put these ones. All right, so now it's checking. 
and we're not wasting a bunch of processing power. So now I can uh, control A it and make sure that I am actually teaching the right thing. Yep, there we go. And it ran a lot smoother because, or I mean, it doesn't make a difference right now, but you are saving processing power on that, especially if you're uh, increasing your performance on the switch or something. All right, so there's actually one more thing I wanna add as a bonus because it's not gonna be maybe all the time that you want the flashlight on. So we want an on and off switch. So we wanna be able to communicate between our states that we have and the async processing that is going on in our common action. And so I'm just gonna show you an example how to do that with a simple you know, on and off switch for your flashlight. So we're gonna add another switch here and we're just gonna call this flashlight. And then in the waiting, for whatever reason, when you're idle, the switch is going to be off. And then when you're moving, the switch is going to be on. So we want the flashlight to turn on when you're moving, off when you're in idle. So we're gonna to go to our script here. And there's a couple ways we can do it. We can just say var self flashlight. And this, I don't know, it's just a naming convention I found to be nice, especially when I'm dealing with multiple things in a script. I just say self and then the name of the, of the switch. And that way I know it's coming from this self object. And then I'm just gonna say get instance and it is a switch, which I learned from my error down there. And it's from self and I know the name and this time I'm just gonna use the name. Sometimes it is just easier and we're gonna get it. So now we're grabbing the value. So we're getting basically the true or false of the switch. And now all we need to do is run a check. That's not it. An if, and we're just gonna say if not self flashlight, meaning that it is not on then we're going to return false, all right? Now, one thing I might not have added is at the very end, you can usually just add a return false, and that means to repeat the script. And if you remember, a return true means to go on to the next action. So in our case, that means that it would go into the async runtime action, which we do not want, because uh, once again, that would make it not an async processing, it would just take it out of the state. And, we, and for this, uh, thing we do not want that so we want it to return false and that means that the link returns false repeat the link and so the thing is is if we add return false up here that means that it actually stops right here it doesn't go any further and then it restarts the link so it's just going to be in a loop this way instead of going all the way down and and doing it now the only thing that we need to add is we need to actually make sure that we set all of these switches to false because they were on at one point. So we need to make sure that they're all false. So now we can actually copy this and go into the link, paste it. Let me just make sure I got this check in. Yep, so there's our flashlight check. And now when we're idle, we don't have it, but when we move, we're moving appropriately. And then when we stop, we don't have it. And then we start moving again and we got it. All right, so that's how you would do it. That's how you would bridge the communication gap between the visual scripting and then the async processing going on with your scripts. And then additionally, usually I would do something like this. I forgot to do this. Um, I would say uh, uh, set up vars or something. This, for, for this one, I would say um, check if flashlight is on. And then for this one, I would say uh, set flashlight direction. Just something simple like that. So yeah, I think that is a wrap for this one. Basically, the key to this video was that we now have access to async parallel processing through common action links with scripting and eventually plugins. And so hopefully you learned something. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. Steam forms get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.